and we will move on to item number four, announcements and presentations. The first item will be with Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Dianos, uh, and that is received update on COVID-19 responses and efforts. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council and members of the public that are with us tonight. I'm just pulling up the presentation here, so you should be able to see it in full screen. My name is Jennifer Dianos. I'm the assistant to the City Manager, and I'm here to give you an update on COVID-19. Tonight, I will go through the blueprint for a safer economy. I'll provide a snapshot of our COVID-19 statistics for San Bruno and San Mateo County. I'll provide an update on city services and specifically with the library reopening um, with modifications. And lastly, a reminder to stay connected with us. I'll start with the blueprint for a safer economy. Um, each Tuesday, the state announces the county metrics. And so earlier today, the state um, updated our metrics. We have no change to our status. We're remaining in the moderate category of the orange tier here. Um, the county metrics that are listed here um, on the screen are just shy of meeting that next less restrictive tier, the yellow or the, or the minimal category. Um, but we are going to stay in this orange category for now. With vaccination rates increasing and test positivity rates nearing a record low, uh, the California Department of Public Health did announce updates to the blueprint for a safer economy beginning April 15th. There are changes to the allowances, and that includes outdoor gatherings with modifications. And I took a snapshot here just to show you the capacity changes for outdoor gatherings. In the red tier, it's up to 25 people. In the orange tier, which is where we are um, as a county, it's up to 50 people. The yellow tier is up to 100 people. There are also changes to private events, meetings with modifications, and indoor live events with modifications and limited to um, in-state visitors. So all of these are listed in the source reference that's up here in the orange header um, of the presentation itself, but that's covid19.ca.gov uh, forward slash safer economy. Governor Newsom also announced an update to our reopening plan and that's beginning June 15th, uh, California will fully reopen if two criteria are met, and that's if the vaccine supply is sufficient for Californians 16 years and older and who wish to be vaccinated and have a sufficient supply, and sufficient is defined as two weeks, um, and that's if hospitalization rates are stable and low. Moving on to county statistics, um, I have a summary table here of the dashboard that is available um, all through smchealth.org. The vaccination totals have continued to increase. And here you can see on, on the screen, San Bruno, 56 of our population, 16 years and older, have been vaccinated. And that's just a smidge over the countywide percentage of 55.8. The completion of the full vaccination series, that data is not available for San Bruno, but countywide, 65.4% um, have been fully vaccinated of the 55.8% that you see there um, that have, have started the series. Vaccination by Health Equity Quartile. Um, health Equity Quartile is disadvantaged neighborhoods. San Bruno is about 48.2%, and that's slightly above the countywide average of 44.8%. So we're in good shape there. Our historical COVID-19 cases citywide uh, for the city of San Bruno, there have been 2,289 cases and a total of 40,910 cases countywide. And in the last, set, uh, excuse me, the last 30 days, there have been 77 new cases in San Bruno and 1,556 countywide. Total deaths, uh, the breakdown by jurisdiction is not provided by the county, um, but there have been a total of 556 deaths. And as a reminder, now is no better time than now, uh, make sure to Keep your distance, wear your mask, and wash your hands um, frequently to avoid spreading COVID-19. Moving on to the vaccine and testing, when are you eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine? Uh, beginning April 15th, all Californians over the age of 16 are eligible. So in the past, on social media and on our website, we have um, consistently promoted myturn.ca.gov, as well as smchealth.org forward slash COVID vaccine. The phone numbers are also on the screen, but both of these tools um, not only notify you when you're eligible, but they also provide an opportunity to book an appointment um, to get that vaccination. Vaccine, um, 
supply does remain limited, um, and that includes the announcement from earlier today with the CDC and the FDA um, citing concerns about the Janssen or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and um, the county issued a release earlier today pausing the county efforts with the use of Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and all of the events um, that have been scheduled and appointments that have been scheduled will be honored. Um, the county was able to shift the Johnson & Johnson over to Pfizer or Moderna, so all of those appointments will be honored as of this time. Um, however, um, other uh, programs like m mobile uh, vaccination um, and other outreach programs will have to be uh, reviewed before proceeding. And although vaccination continues, um, testing does remain a critical way to keep you, your family, and our community safe. And we've also promoted this on social media very often and on our website, but San Bruno has partnered with San Mateo County to offer no-cost COVID-19 testing to our residents and to anyone that works in our county. Those two locations are 530 Huntington, that's offered on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And at 975 Sneak Lane, that's Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the bottom website reference here, um, smcgov.org forward slash testing, if you happen to not be in San Bruno and still want to get tested, there are many other locations throughout the county that also offer free um, testing and appointments are always preferred but not required. Moving on to city services, <clears throat> and I'm going to focus on the San Bruno Library. So as you know, several of our facilities were closed at the beginning of the pandemic, including the San Bruno Library. It closed as of March 14, 2020, and launched the curbside pickup in May of 2020. So it was closed for just about two months. Since launching curbside pickup, there have been over 72,000 72, items were checked out, and nearly 8,000 appointments were filled. So that's um, a lot of activity for the library. Um, and I'm happy to uh, provide this information to you, but beginning April 19th, the library will reopen with modifications. Those modifications are 25% capacity. There are wellness and temperature check requirements upon entry, and there will be special hours. So the special hours are in blocks of time, and this is really in an effort to allow for time for cleaning and between visits um, that come to the library. And so from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., there will be a browse and go opportunity. Two to three, there's a curbside pickup. Four to six, there's a browse and go opportunity again. So two browse and go um, opportunities throughout the day. And what does browse and go service mean? It's browsing, of course, checking out and returning material, whole pickups, use of public computers for a limited time, computer printouts, you can get a new library card, simple reference questions. Um, and it's really the services that do not require close contact, and that's for the safety of our employees and of our patrons. Um, there are no change to parks. Um, what you see here has been available for quite some time and has previously been reported. Everything that's here on the open side remains open, um, but I will highlight the closed uh, picnic sites remain closed, drinking fountains remain closed, and indoor recreation facilities remain closed. Our EOC and department directors continually evaluate services as our status changes. Um, we uh, ensure compliance with guidance as they're issued. And I mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, I mentioned this last time, but in terms of next steps and summer programs, which is important to a lot of our um, community families, um, the activity guide will be released at the end of this month, and it will include summer camp and program offerings. And so there has been a couple of teasers, one or two that have been posted on social media, but that will be officially um, available at the end of this month. And as a reminder, please stay connected. SMC Alert is our emergency notification system. Social media, we provide updates. Um, so stay connected. If you're not signed up, please sign up. That concludes my presentation this evening, and I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for your presentation. If you could uh, stop sharing the screen. And then I'm, as my colleagues may start to raise their hand, just on the library, um, and correct me if I'm incorrect, but my understanding is the uh, Angus side for the entrance will be the only available entry, like in City Hall, it's on Linden. This is Angus, uh, and 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 I, you know, I, you know the the library personnel and staff are are excited um, and preparing 
uh, but also just be patient because there are some modifications, as, as was described. All the computers will not be accessible at one time because of the social distancing. Or if you're, you're used to going in, maybe reading the paper and sitting there and reading it for an hour or so, that may not be available at this time. So uh, understand it's, it's exciting to see that go forward, but just uh, understand the staff is excited to, to see the patrons, uh, but just be patient because things obviously are modified for uh, everyone's safety. Um, with that, uh, Council Member Mason. Uh, thank you for the presentation and for the updates on both the camps from that, uh, that were requested from last month and also the update on the library. Um, I just wanted to ask about um, two things. One is a vaccination pop-up coming to San Bruno. I know I've spoken with a supervisor a couple of times about this, and it seemed like we were getting close, and then um, it, it went to another city. So I'm curious to know, are we taking any opportunities to try to get a pop-up vaccination site in San Bruno? Because we, we are one of the cities that has not had any yet. Um, and then the second is just a thank you to all of the staff that were involved in the Easter Bunny home visits. Um, I saw a number of pictures all over social media, and it just looked like an amazing um, event for the kids who got a visit from the Easter Bunny. So thank you for whoever thought of it and whoever worked on that. Um, thank you so much. Vice Mayor Medina. Oh, yes, wait, she uh, didn't answer the question. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, I, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, let's let's Rico pause. <laughs> let's, let's turn it over to staff. Sure. So, in terms of the mobile vaccination site, nothing has officially been scheduled or announced for the city of San Bruno. But as soon as information is available, that will be shared um, with the community. Right now, those mobile sites are really focused on the health core tile um, and have been in other close by um, neighborhoods. I know there's been one in South City in East Palo Alto, in North Fair Oaks, and so I think there's a focus in, in those um, specific neighborhoods, but as soon as we have more information, we will report back. Yeah, and, and we're not the only city that has not is not receiving one, and, and you're correct as far as uh, trying to hit pockets that they feel are, are the need greatest at this moment. Vice Mayor Medina. Yes, uh, I want to share um, concern about how our picnic tables at City Park are kind of being used and what's what's our what's our view on that um it is outside if families are gathering that's okay but um it seems like more and more people are are taking it easier there at the picnic tables and and i uh, just wanted to, to hear uh what we should be doing there i'll pause <laughs> city staff please so I can take that back to our EOC team. Currently, there is signage that is available um, throughout the park, and, and it, it should be placed on the picnic table itself, um, showing closure in, in accordance with um, the guidance that has been issued. Um, but I would have to find out more to see if any changes can be made to that. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Mason. All right, I thank you. Just one follow-up question to the vaccination. Uh, question, so can what can our city be doing to advocate for our site? So I, I do understand that there is like a method to this, but um, I also have um, seen uh, some advocacy around cities, and so I'm wondering how can we advocate better? How can the, does the administration need direction from us? What can we do to advocate for our city to get a site? C city manager, did you want to chime in? Sure. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Mason, for that. Uh, know that we have been in communication with the county EOC as well as uh, administration at the county, and they do know our desire for a vaccination site here. Um, uh, as uh, uh, Jennifer uh, Dianos mentioned, currently the vaccination sites have been focused on health decisions on uh, communities and parts of our county that are seeing uh, some of the, the greatest uh, positivity with COVID-19. And so that is the reason uh, why the public has not seen uh, a vaccination site here. Uh, with the limited uh, amount of vaccines that are available, they are being prioritized uh, based on health decisions. And so uh, I would say that the county absolutely knows that we and everybody else uh, wants a vaccination clinic. Uh, and we have um, heard from the county that as soon as they are able to ramp up 
their vaccination program. Uh, they, they look to either one, extend it to um, uh, cities uh, like us, or a return to their mass vaccination clinics. Uh, the, the council may remember uh, that the county actually transitioned away from the mass vaccination clinics and went to these smaller, more tailored sites, uh, frankly, based on the availability of the vaccine. Uh, and, and so these things are being actively managed. Uh, and so um, uh, I, I think we uh, everyone knows. And I appreciate staff's uh, continued efforts as well as the council's drive uh, because obviously at Skyline College we have uh, Second Harvest Food Distribution on Huntington, uh, which staff uh, maintains, as well as uh, on Snaith there are testing sites, which those weren't here before. So uh, it's thanks to everybody's uh, work and, and keeping the county aware of our interests. So thank you to staff. With no other hands up, um, thank you, Jennifer, once again for your presentation and your update. Now we'll move on under uh, announcements still under item B, uh, announcement. The, the spring community cleanup event on Saturday, May 1st, 2021, will be held from 8 to 11 a.m. The event is located at 975 Heath Lane and residence, San Bruno residence, may drop off latex paint, bulky items, e-waste appliances, and bags of garbage. Residents are prohibited from dropping off dirt, rocks, or concrete. This is an event open to San Bruno residents only, and participants will be asked to show identification showing San Bruno residency. COVID-19 guidelines will be enforced, including the re requirements of mask wearing. This event is a sponsored by Recology and the City of San Bruno, which was a similar event which was held in the City Hall parking lot on October 17th. So uh, again, that is open. Understand that for the residents that wish to come by, uh, they will be asked to unload their vehicles into the appropriate sections for those uh, disposable items. We want to thank uh, staff and Recology um, for working on this project along with Council Member Salazar and I, as well as obviously the church at 975 Sneath Lane, who has been very helpful to this community um, uh, for this and other things. Um, moving on to item C, announced that the, um, there will be, it's not a possible, there will be a nine-week closure of the BART garage due to retrofitting and upgrades to the lighting system. The garage will be done in phases. The garage in itself, in entirety, will not be closed. It will be done in uh, phases beginning with floors three, five, and that begins on April the 26th. So just wanted uh, folks to be aware of that. 